Sweat formed in some beads on my forehead and rolled down my face. The autumn air was warm and stagnant in this large, empty meeting room. A woman's voice broke the silence. Do you prefer Ray or Raymond? Neither. I despised both options because I hated the person that Raymond had become. Raymond snuck around and lied and cheated, and above all else, had become completely unreliable. Raymond was a hopeless individual, and I, I was different. I just needed to be fixed. I just needed some help. I just needed love. <clears throat> I looked down at the facility badge that was hanging around the neck of this woman. The name under the picture I fell. Are you hungry? When was the last time you ate? The perky light skinned me for a near gesture to me with a gentle kindness. Without waiting for my response, she gestured to another facility worker. <clears throat> Paul, would you fetch Raymond here some lunch? Paul nodded at Val and exited the room, leaving behind just Val, myself, and a fleeting comfort about the atmosphere. The emptiness hanging in the air gave my mind space to listen to my racing thoughts. I was unsure about every and all life choices I had made in the past year, but regardless of my lack of confidence, my inner voice telling me that I was making the wrong decision, I knew that I had come to the second story meeting room in City Heights for a reason, and I would have to get used to it here. After all, that was right on the mark with her questions. Exhausted, I could feel my energy exponentially decreasing with every effort of the limbs of my chemically dependent body. Paul walked back to the doors with a pre wrapped plate that had been assembled elsewhere in the facility. In the light, I could better see the details of his face, his black eyebrows contrasting with the white of the hair that hid under his baseball cap. Toasted ham sandwiches, he said as he set the plate down with a glass of iced water. The savory, salty aroma coming from the plate combined with my lengthy, unintentional fast had, make it had made it impossible for me to ignore their heated white bread deli meat stack. <clears throat> what scares you about being here? Bell's demeanor changed as she asked me this. Are you sure you want to commit to the stake agreement? I could feel her words forming to a spirit that shot through my chest and gave an anxiety-induced fear to my mind and body. I was suddenly very aware of my sickening fear of failure, and everything in me told me to get up and make a mad dash for the door. We are offering you a bed here, and my only advice to you is to take it and to hold on to it for dear life. Bell declared this with adamancy and conviction so she could better capture, uh, capture my attention. By this time, I was making a conscious effort to seem like I was keeping my calm. I decided to mind my hunger and start on my food. As I took a bite of the sandwich, I was instantly 10 years old on a bright, breezy summer day with my mom laying out at the Hawaii shores. The air was wet with salt water and the June sun shone bright in the sky. Transparent turquoise waves lifted sand from the shallow ocean floor and made a loud roar as they crashed into the shoreline. It was here that I would enjoy my mother's ham sandwiches while soaking up the San Diego sun. I loved those carefree lazy days of school vacation during my childhood. As the bite passed down my esophagus, I brought myself back to the meeting room, and it was there that I remembered that there was a calming time before being stuck between drug-induced anxiety and the cold, stark, unsure, couch-surfing reality that I was trapped in. Raymond. I could feel the ambiance in the room shift, and myself being freed of some anxieties about the place. Looking back, it was the calming sensation associated with the memory of my childhood that brought my anxiety down. It was then that I realized I was exactly in the right place, and I was ready to make the commitment to the six-month stay in residential rehab for alcohol and drug addiction. From the second story room, I was escorted by Val across a wide, open, beautifully paved courtyard into a new building. We walked through the door that read, with a sign over it that read, Nurses Station. The room was frigid and small. As a part of the intake process, we will need to record your vitals. Please step on the scale. I couldn't help but feel somewhat embarrassed, because before my drug addiction, I was already very thin. 
Now I can only imagine how much weight I had shed during my extended drug bender. I hated my reflection because now my face sunk in around my cheeks and eyes. And if I squinted hard enough in the mirror, I could make out what my skull must look like. Raymond? Please step on the scale. I began my stay at Stepping Stone San Diego Adult Rehabilitation Center for Drug and Alcohol Addiction on November 9, 2016. At 105 pounds, about 40 pounds under my regular body weight. Since January of that year, I had incorporated crystal methamphetamine into my daily diet. And, by July, my chemical romance with the drug overtook my normal eating habits, as well as every aspect of my life. Unbeknownst to me, addiction, had, addiction to this chemical had already sank its roots deep into my mind, my body's matrix. Sleep and nutrition are vital in sustaining a healthy mental and physical condition. Sustenance <coughs> had been, or food intake had been completely replaced by crystal, with crystal meth by October because every ingestion of the drug had silenced any hunger or exhaustion I felt and made it impossible to stomach any food or get a full night's rest. As I gazed out the window of the small nurse's station, I reflected on my eating habits, or lack thereof. In fact, my lack of nutrition caused regular fainting spells for almost half the year leading up to my stay at Stepping Stone. I thought back to when, it, when I first noticed it becoming a problem. I would use before and after work daily. Did you skip eating on your meal break again, right? My manager questioned. Yeah, but I took my meal with me. I said as I clicked my cigarette ash onto the floor. I'm going to eat it at home. I stood up from my chair and instantly collapsed onto the ground. Syncope, or temporary loss of consciousness associated with a fall in blood pressure, is commonly caused by hunger. And those types of fainting spells were common during my drug benching days. <clears throat> ding, ding, ding. My thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a large farmland <coughs> bell, which I gathered meant some type of assembly for the residents. Lunch is being served. Bob gazed upon with a concerned look on her face. Don't worry about finishing this. Go eat. With those words, she dismissed me, and I made my way over to the large dining room, uh, dining room I had passed earlier in the courtyard. As I walked nervously through the courtyard, I gazed ahead through double glass doors to see a whole working colony of residents organized throughout the cafeteria. The residents resembled worker bees moving from station to station in their hive. This felt like the first day of being at a new school, and that was the weird kid that nobody knew. I could feel an overwhelming anxiety about the place. <clears throat> I felt like an outside stranger. And this was their home, and I didn't want to just barge in. An effeminate young male's voice called from behind me. Are you a new roommate? I turned around to meet a large, uh, taller gentleman, maybe just a couple years older than myself. He nudged me at the sides and said, Honey, look at you. You need to eat. You're all skin and bones. He pushed me through the doors. Oh no. Contact. Suddenly I was in the presence of all the residents, and then terror. Ding, ding, ding. Stepping stone, we have a new resident. Let's everyone give Raymond a warm welcome and a hug. My new roommate exclaimed this while he rang that old fashioned farm handbell. I sank back into my body. This was entirely too much exposure for, to new surroundings for one day. I felt like a cat when the time comes that the owner must bathe them. Now that the residents were lining up to individually give, uh, now all the residents were lining up to individually introduce themselves and give me a hug. Uh, no, stop. Where did all my personal space go? I needed my bubble, and this ex I wasn't ecstatic about this contact sport call ritual of interactions and hugs they forced me to endure like hazing to get into a frat. But I was relieved that everyone wor welcomed me warmly. <clears throat> During lunch, my table was bustling with other residents who were on the inside scoop of the newest addition to their house. I marveled at my new roommates. I could have shed a tear over the beauty of being seated at a table with 
of recovering drug addicts who all looked healthy and well fed. The PA system rang overhead. Ram into the meeting lounge, please. Ram into the meeting lounge. I looked at my new, my new roommates cluelessly, and they gestured to a room upstairs. Upstairs. Bell met me for more paperwork. Okay. Now check the box that says homeless slash no permanent address. Val's voice bounced. Val's strong voice bounced off the walls of the room. I was seated with four other residents who all arrived at stepping stone earlier in the week. Homeless, I thought. When did I become so drug addicted that I couldn't sustain myself out on the streets? I had never thought of myself as homeless before. I looked down at the packet in front of me. <coughs> Application for electronic benefit transfer card. I slumped back into my chair. I couldn't help but feel someone embarrassed that I was actually applying for an EDT card like a real life homeless person with a shopping cart and the whole homeless guy starter kit. I mean, I guess I was homeless. I was couch surfing and quickly ran out of friends who would lend me their sofa and extra bedding. Real life homelessness was just around the corner. What's wrong, right? Bella again had that same concerned look on her face. It's nothing. I just don't really want to apply for EBC. My words diminished in confidence as I listened to how I sounded. Val looked frustrated as she explained. We use your cards to buy the food that, for the residents that you um, are then... We use your cards to buy food for the residents, you. Then upon your departure from Stepping Stone, you will receive your EBT card for your own personal use. What were you eating yesterday? She questioned. Nothing, I thought. It was solidified in my mind. Now I was starting to think of myself as being recently homeless. I realized I was deeply, deeply fearful of being homeless in the streets again. So the small task of filling out an EBT form wasn't such a big deal. Self-sustainability, in regards to finding my next meal, suddenly didn't feel like such a foreign concept anymore. After several months and countless mental hurdles, I departed from Stepping Stone of San Diego, a changed man. Family and friends validated the change that I could feel inside and out. My body was toxin-free and my mind was rid of anxiety. I had begun the process of repairing the damage to my old life. I felt healthier. I now ate three meals a day and weighed 160 pounds. Stepping Stone also helped me work through the reasons that I used drugs by teaching me to love myself and accept the kindness of others. Upon my departure of Stepping Stone, I changed my name to differentiate the old self while symbolizing the person that blossomed from rehab. Today, despite daily triggers and urges, I'm clean out crystal meth. I have a sponsor who I check in with regularly, and I still attend weekly narcotics anonymous meetings. Hi, my name is Romeo, addict alcoholic.